Hi there. Now in the video you're about to watch, there are two things that might make a seasoned mechanic raise his eyebrows or shake his head, or maybe even call me a knucklehead. And that's okay. But one I did intentionally, and one I did by accident, and I fixed it later. See if you can spot them, and then we'll come back here together and talk about them. Okay, so our first operation here is going to be replacing the bronze bushing in the back of the crankshaft, which is this inner circle right here. And what I'm going to do is take a measurement with my dial calipers, just so I get that back in the same relative depth. I'm just going to use the end of my calipers here. And I can lock it down. So we've got point one nine zero. All right. Now I have a puller to get in behind these little feet, grab in behind the bushing and then you put pressure on the back of the camshaft or crankshaft just like that they grab there and pull it right out if you don't want to get one of these uh, if you don't want to spend the money there's the old trick of packing that with grease and then finding something that fits it snug and tapping on it with a hammer and you just use kind of uh, hydraulics basically to pull that push that out another cool trick is to use bread and that's probably what I would do if I didn't have this just because it doesn't make such a mess so I'm gonna shove that in there okay and when you use one of these it's the bolt the main screw that spreads those feet apart Get those spread apart in there. Okay. By the way, I've got this engine on a metal table strapped with ratchet straps. If you're working on an engine, uh, not mounted on a stand some way do this because you really don't want that rolling over on top of you Let's see if I can get you to where you can see that a little bit better she is been sitting there since 1948 or well, 47 actually
Okay, now I have a small little bushing and bearing driver that I'm going to use, and I really recommend uh, getting something um, that both goes inside the bushing and shoulders on the end of it instead of just trying to hold that and tap it with a hammer and not hit your fingers and get it crooked um, you can just do a much better job with this you can guide it you can hold it straight and hit it at all at the same time my next task is to get the clutch bell housing onto the back of the engine I've noticed these studs are just a little bit stubborn. But that's what they invented dead blows for. Okay, I'll use the bolts to suck it up the rest of the way. I'm using Rust-Oleum Semi-Gloss Black. You could use clear if you want a natural uh, steel look, like they were probably at the factory. Um, I just want to coat them with something so they don't rust again. So I'm going to pause and give just a brief overview of what a clutch does. Um, I got this kit from my parts house. It's a Luke, um, part number 04-123, and it had everything you need. Has everything you need. Um, I already installed the bearing, the pilot bearing, in the back of the crank, so that's not here. Um, you can think of a clutch as being kind of like a brake disc brake, only opposite in a couple of ways. On a disc brake, you have a spinning steel disc, and your two brake pads squeeze it to slow the car down. In the clutch, you have two spinning discs with the brake pad in between the two, the clutch disc. It's like brake material and it is spinning all the time unless you push on the pet on the pedal to release it so this first biggest piece is the flywheel it has a ring gear around the outer edge that it, the starter bendix engages when you start the engine if you have this all torn apart, now is the time to replace that if it's grinding when you crank the starter. The center part is the surface that the clutch engages, as you can see. You have the clutch disc itself. This is the only part that engages the input shaft on the transmission. So these two <clears throat> Let me get to this. 
This is a clutch cover or pressure plate, whatever you want to call it. This gets bolt bolted directly to the flywheel. So these two are spinning all the time as the engine is running. This is only spinning if your pedal is disengaged. Does that make sense? You push on the clutch pedal, this will stop spinning. And we'll get into how that works exactly a little bit. And these springs dampen the shock effect of when you start moving. Um, this is a throw out bearing. There's a bearing in there. And you have a fork. I don't have it here. It's across the shop right now but that pushes on these springs and uh, disengages and that's about it so using the 5 8 socket I'm just going to tighten down the bell housing there are two bolts that go on the top on the outside that are easy to get to then up inside the bell housing we have one two three four After you've snug those up, you can take your torque wrench and hit all six bolts. I have mine set at 45 foot-pounds. Just make sure they're nice and tight. Okay, now we're going to install our flywheel. There are three studs pressed into the back of the crankshaft. And you gotta find the right combination. To get those to line up. Probably once more. the end of my hammer and just all right so I got the flywheel in place there's a certain rotation you got to get the three holes in the flywheel lined up with the three studs on the back of the crankshaft. There's only one way they can go. So now I'm going to get the bolts and torque those down. And we're going to torque them down like you would the torque sequence on a wheel. We're going to go cross, 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 cross and suck it down evenly so we don't put a warp in that flywheel. Now you see instead of a lock washer, these have these little lock tabs. You bend the ears over. So be sure to reuse those. Get new ones if they're broken. 
That one's bent over. I better straighten that real quick. Okay, I've set my torque wrench to 60 foot-pounds. I'm using an 11 16th socket. That one was still backed off a ways. You could also put your socket on an extension and it should go through the back hole on the bell housing. You should be able to get all the bolts that way, but I kind of wanted to show you inside here what I was doing. So. There we go. Now I'm going to go across. Like I said, just like tightening, torquing down a wheel, a lug nut. tight. Okay, now I'll cross. And again. Two more. Light's dying. I'm just gonna go around again. Around the horn. Okay. Next, I'm gonna get a chisel and bend these tabs back up against the head of the bolts. So it can be a little difficult to get up in here and bend these over. So you basically just have to do the ones you can get to, mostly on the top, bend it over, and then I take pry bar on the edge of the bell housing. So I'll show you that. And we turn, turn, turn. Just like that. And it's kind of a slow process. Just keep going until the ones you need on the top are, are up there. Like this one right here I could do. Just like that. And I think you get the idea. So now it's time for the clutch disc. 
Uh, on this model anyway, there's only one way you can put this in. If you put it in backwards, it high centers on the back of the crankshaft. It doesn't come in contact with the flywheel, the friction surface of the flywheel. And so it can only go this way. You're going to take an uh, installation tool, which takes but it's exactly like the input shaft on the transmission. This fits in the pilot bearing and this matches the splines on the clutch. Just like that. So you're going to hold your clutch up in here where it goes and push that in so it'll stay. Now once again, this is the pressure plate or clutch cover. If my fingers were strong enough and I pushed on these little fingers, these springs, it would make this disc actually go down in this position. So like this, it's coming backwards towards the transmission. So your clutch pedal is hooked to a throwout bearing and you're pushing on all these fingers at one time and it's sucking that disc backwards, basically giving this a gap between the three pieces so that this isn't hooked up. And that is how you're able to disengage and shift. So we're going to throw this in here. tool will let me. I might have to get a little creative here, so hold on. Okay, what I had to do because of the clutch tool, or the installation tool, I took the disc out and put it inside the cover and held that all up in there and then put the installation tool back in and lined it all back up laying under the car and you have lots of room down here, you might be able to angle that up. But since I'm working on a table like this, I couldn't. Okay, so I got four bolts in. I'll try to get the other two in. I may have to rotate it. That looks like a 9 16 to see if taking the inspection plate off helps get those top bolts in without turning the engine over. in the car it'd be difficult. You'd have to take the cover off the floor and I don't know if I'm able to use two hands and you couldn't reach around the floor pan of the car to do that. I got them in but I don't think I can get a wrench on them.
So I think with the help of between my ratchet and one of these offset wrenches, I can get to every bolt without having to turn the engine over. And the main thing you want to do here is tighten a bolt one round, tighten the one across one round. Gen uh, slowly settle the clutch plate as a unit down. You don't want to tighten one all the way down and then tighten another one all the way down because that can distort and warp the whole thing. So we're just going to slowly go about one round at a time on each bolt. takes time, but we want it to work. short socket and the regular socket or the mid-size, mid-length socket. I don't know what they call them exactly. And that seemed to get me there with my swivel head ratchet. So now I can pull the installation tool out. There is pressure on the clutch. So that'll stay just how it is. I guess it's time for the trend, uh, throw out bearing. The next thing I want to do is prepare the fork and the bearing. Uh, as you can see I've cleaned the part of the fork that will be to the outside of the transmission or clutch and I've painted it. I've been packing grease inside where the this snaps onto the ball stud in the bell housing and I'm using caliper grease. This is a high temperature grease. So I've got that in there. Just take a little bit more. You don't need much. And I'm going to put this in the groove here. make a mess with it. And then, then this will just go just like that. Okay, so that stud with the ball on the end of it is right here. So I need to sneak this arm through the slot. Okay, I'll just take the bearing off. That's easier. Get that lined up. Okay, that should be good. Well, the clutch kit came with a lubricant for the splines. You could also use high temp grease. I'm just going to put a little bit on here and where it goes into the pilot bearing 
and I wouldn't gob it on, just lightly coat it so it doesn't get all over the clutch disc. Just like that. Did you see those two things I was talking about? Now the first one that I intentionally did not do was have the, re the uh, flywheel resurfaced. If you noticed it was, well, you could tell it wasn't resurfaced. Why didn't I do that? Well, I took a machine of straight edge and a feeler gauge and I could not get even the thinnest feeler gauge to go under there, which means it was not warped at all and it was also not discolored. When things overheat, you're burning the clutch on that flywheel, it'll heat up the flywheel and turn it gold, straw color, then blue, purple. That wasn't there. It had not been overheated. It was just fine. Now, if you've never done this before, this is your first time, you don't know what to look for, by all means, take it and get it resurfaced. Um, there's also a logistical problem there for me because I'm a couple hours from the nearest uh, machinist. So, and the second one was I screwed up the first um, pilot bushing. I hammered that thing in and I did not pay close enough attention to what was happening. And you can tell during the video the top edge of that got beat up on the inside of that pilot bushing. And uh, once I eventually bent down far enough to see what was going on, I could tell and I replaced it. So everything's cool. I make mistakes, obviously. So do we all. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.